This is Jad Davenport with Islands Magazine, and I'm up here in the southwest coast of Greenland with Lindblad Expeditions on their brand new flagship, the National Geographic Explorer. And we're heading into this beautiful fjord back here where the Norse colony of the Western Settlement once existed back in the 14th century. And I'm here to do a story about what happened to 1,400 men, women, and children who disappeared under the Arctic night. And the unbelievable thing is that Lindblad, this was not on their charted itinerary, decided to turn this $67 million ship around just so we can go back into this fjord. And tonight we're going to be looking for some lost Norse ruins. My journey began in Iceland about a week before the ship set sail. In order to find the, this lost western settlement of Vikings, I wanted to understand where they had come from. And of course they had come from Iceland, which is this beautiful, raw, wild island nation. So I went out to the countryside, looked at some of the farms to get an idea of what life would have been like back then. This is the re reproduction of Eric the Red's homestead. He was the Viking that pioneered the settlement of Greenland in the 900s. You get a good feel for what life must have been like. A sod house inside, very dark, smoky. A lot of these people were cut off from the rest of the world. They were living on the far, far edge of the civilized world. And as always, the Vikings were very superstitious, and they believed that uh, these terrors lurked just outside the gates, known as the Skraelings. We spent the next few days sailing along the northwest coast of Iceland, getting to know the passengers and crew, getting settled into our very luxurious accommodations. The National Geographic Explorer is a brand new ship, uh, lots of space. I'm used to a bathroom down the hall on some of the smaller cruise ships. We stopped off at some of the smaller islands that are used as summer residences for the Icelanders. And we spent a lot of time at photography. Uh, almost every passenger had some sort of camera. One of my favorite things to photograph were the puffins that were all over northwest Iceland. Beautiful little birds and apparently very tasty. With Iceland done, we headed back to the ship and set sail for southwest Greenland. Greenland is the largest island in the world. People often call it the eighth continent. It's a massive ice sheet surrounded by a thin strip of barren tundra. We sailed across the Greenland Straits and hit the east side of Greenland, which was extremely icy and rocky. This is the first place the Vikings hit before they traveled to the southwest corner. The scenery is just unbelievably rugged. and You can see glaciers creeping over just about every cliff. We gradually made our way south along the eastern shores of Greenland, uh, running into small little Inuit villages. They still survived like a half a century off so fishing the sea and also hunting the caribou and the seals. Shore visits every day give you a chance to see how the culture has changed over the years. Initially they started out um, living in tents, then in sod houses, much as the Norse Greenlanders probably did. It's a lot of fun to walk around the Inuit villages. You meet all kinds of people. The kids are always out playing. We eventually made our way up the western coast of Greenland into some of the Inuit villages where the Vikings actually had once had settlements. And this includes the settlement of Eric the Red where he landed with a small reproduction church and a sod house out in front. Heading further north, the landscape changed again. We were back into the fjords with heavy glaciers tall cliffs, lots of icebergs. The villages thinned out and we spent most of our days out hiking along the tundra, which was a lot of fun. We saw some caribou, no polar bears, but there was another carnivorous animal up there that almost ate us alive, and those are all the black flies and mosquitoes. They were just unbelievably unrelenting. One of my favorite shore visits was a stop at the Valsi church ruins. And these were some 15th century ruins that still are still standing. And it's from here that we have our last record of the Vikings in Greenland. In 1408, there was a marriage between an Icelander and a Greenland girl. But where I really wanted to go was much further north and further east inside one of the largest fjord systems in the world. It was called the Western Settlement, and it's where in the 1350s, 1,500 Vikings vanished almost into thin air. We were able to land on this remote fjord after convincing the captain to take the ship up there with archaeologist Vinnie Butler. Do you think it might be right up on the top there? No, I don't think so because it's just too windy. Oh. It was a race against the darkness as Vinnie clambered up the tundra. We were all looking for stones that might indicate the ruins. But here's a stone. I don't know. 
a little thinner. My incredible archaeological find turned out to be one of many false alarms. Uh, apparently the tundra is just crammed full of square stones. Darkness was falling. The captain said we had to get going, and suddenly Jess, one of the naturalists, started yelling on his radio. He'd found something high on the mountain. It took us about 20 minutes to race up there, and underneath the caribou skull we found something no one had ever seen before. You can read more about our discovery and the fate of the Western Settlement in the November 2009 issue of Islands Magazine.